afternoon, everybody. Hey, everyone. Well, I'm Evan Fuchs, and I'm here with my friends Lee York and Jody O'Brien. How are y'all doing today? Good. How are you? I'm good. Did you notice I did a y'all? That was for you and for um, oh. our brother Brent, who's not with us today. So I'll translate for those in the um, upper eastern part of the country. You guys, how are you doing? <laughs> Thank you for that. <laughs> it's not a word. <laughs> Neither is y'all. Yes, it's a conjunction. Oh. Don't get fancy now. <laughs> uh, all right, so we're here with our word of the day. Lee, this, this was all you. What, what's our word for today? Engage. Let's right, get engaged. So engage. Now tell me what, why, and, and by the way, just to f remind everybody, each week or each time we broadcast, we, uh, we pick a word to focus on because we noticed that uh, you know, the conversation can get lively and then we can sort of be all over the place so that we use that to focus. So, uh, Lee, why did you pick Engage? Um, I, as is everyone, I've been having a lot of conversations via Zoom or other platforms like that, um, talking a lot about education and, you know, obviously there's a shift to virtual, how much of that will remain, right? And, you know, I have a lot of people say that when they do something online, um, you know, such as Zoom, they're just, they don't feel as engaged, right? They're, and so um, I just started thinking about that and what it meant. So that's why I pitched the word. Okay. It's, uh, what, what, does, what does the word engage mean to you in, in, your, in this context? I think it's... Um, just about being in the moment, you know, I mean, it's more than participating. It's, it's, it's truly being in the moment, interacting with, um, you know, who, whoever you're with. So, um, like if I'm in a class, if, if I'm, if I'm in a zoom class, it's pretty easy for me to just kind of tune out where the class is like the radio in the background and I'm doing a bunch of other stuff. But if I engage, you know, if I focus on the speaker in the classrooms and pay attention, I'm going to get a whole lot more out of that class. So, all right. Well, let me do the Jody. So, um, and by the way, I love that I get to be the one slinging the questions. Um, so, <laughs> so, here, Jody, tell me something that you have found uh, for you personally to be engaging recently, like, you know, in the last few days. Is there anything like online or otherwise that you found to be particularly engaging in these um, crazy and wild times? So believe it or not, I think I've seen a, a number of things that are engaging, but I'm going to, I'm going to stick to one. And that is I have had more virtual conversations using tools like Zoom and Google Hangouts and et cetera, where I get to hear and see people than I do on a normal course of a day. So I'm used to working at home by myself in the home office when I'm not out in the classroom. And and if I had two or three or even a week of that time, I would, I could go without seeing anyone. I actually find them, I find everyone attempting to be more engaged now and reaching out and, you know, um, connecting with me on um, Google Hangouts and looking at me, which I find cool. I wish we could, I hope we can keep that. So, so you, you find like you your the people that you connect with your sphere your circle your people your tribe to be more engaged now than maybe th this time a month ago or a year ago yeah i think they all waited a, a month ago or a year ago they waited till they actually physically saw you right and and that was okay and maybe in the meantime they might give you a call or a tap now i find everyone really desperate to connect or engage with you and so they're reaching out through all of these um uh, virtual tools that we have to really engage. I feel more engaged with some of my tribe, so to speak, than ever before. So do you, is that going to be, is that going to be lasting? Do you think? Like when I, ho I hope it's lasting. I think it's a cool habit for us to develop and start to use. Um, we've been, we've been screaming for what, two weeks now about turn your cameras on, let people see you. And I hope by the time, we get back out and about, we have learned to turn our cameras on and we have learned that there are 
Oh, you know what, Jody? I think I think our live feed ended somehow. I don't think we're going live anymore. What? Yeah, I don't know what happened. But let's try it again. Okay. Oh yeah, it was six minutes. Not sure what happened there. All righty. Good afternoon, everybody. Stop. Okay, cut that out for a second. Yep. Let me try again. Okay, one more time. Do we break the internet? Yeah, but we're gonna fix it too. Because we're that good. Yeah. <laughs> I heard Garth say? Brooks. I heard Garth Brooks broke the internet the other night too. I think Holly's gonna break it doing her uh, coffee something in the mornings. All right, here we go. We're gonna try it again. Oh, now streaming live. No. We're back. Well, let's check the page and make sure we're there. I'm not sure if we are or not. My screen says live on yeah. Facebook, but I don't have Facebook up where I can, because I get that double feedback thing. Yeah, I don't know. It's being uh, technically challenging. So maybe we can overcome. Maybe someone will um, message All right, I do, I do believe we're back. OK, perfect. OK, so where were we? Yeah. Jody was telling us how we're more engaged, and she wants us to stay that way. Yeah, so Jody, you think it's going to last like if and when things come back to some kind of uh, normalcy? You think that 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 more engaged aspect, a tighter knit group, is going to be is going to survive that? I think people have learned tools and they are liking those tools, like myself. So instead of waiting or picking up a text or something, I think we might actually learn to make a better connection with people by using Zoom and Google Hangouts and all, and all these other wonderful tools that we're using. I think that will be our new normal. All right, so tell me something other than Zoom. I know that's all the rage, right? Because now suddenly everybody yeah. knows how to use this platform, which is super, but what, tell me something else like, uh, talk to me about engagement and other aspects. What, what about like not using technology, going low, low tech? Well, um, the teddy bear thing. Oh, yes. What's yes. that? <laughs> Love that. What is it? Yeah, so a lot of neighborhoods around the country, people are asking, you put teddy bears like in the window or on your porch, things like that. Um, and when families are out walking in the neighborhood with their children, they're looking for teddy bears. They're supposed to spot them. Um, oh. Another one, a guy in my neighborhood has like a four-year-old and a six-year-old, and they're taking chalk and drawing Easter eggs all over the curbs, all over the neighborhood. And then when you go out for a walk, you're supposed to look for the Easter eggs. Oh, I gotcha. Yeah. So just kind of a neighborhood, you know. So can, I, I, can I share one? This has nothing to do with like yeah. real estate or anything, but, yeah. <laughs> but I, I thought this was kind of cool. So, you know, one of my favorite bands is Wilco. And... Uh, they have this song called Walkin. And what they've been doing on their Instagram um, stories is people are like, you know, the, the lyric is, I'm walking all by myself. And so they have, you know, like, walk your dog or something by, by itself and then play that music behind it and post it on Instagram and tag them. And then they'll add it to their story. 
so uh, I had like a big moment of uh, spotlight yesterday because I we took our dogs on the walk and, and I posted it on Instagram and tagged them and they added me to their story and it was like I was all a flutter like I made it on the <laughs> story you know but I thought that's a great example of engagement right it, 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 it's yeah. um, it's just them out there connecting with their fans and the people who care about them and their brand and giving them you know the two way interaction you know isn't that cool. Or was that's I just great. more excited about it than that's I should have been? That's great. No, I think that's great. people to send us examples it. of being engaged. All right. Um, now, what about, um, take it to real estate for me. Like in this time, which who knows what tomorrow is going to bring, right? But the way we are right now, give me an example. If, if I'm a realtor, which I am, what can I do when, when I hang up with you all? What can I do um, in the area of engagement like today? Jody, give me something I can do to, you know, if I want to engage my people. Yeah. So I, I'm, I'm going to say that um, one of the biggest things I think we need to start breaking apart and, and um, looking at people and NER is already doing this for us. So you don't have to reinvent the wheel. They have it out there, but you know, we're, we're, we're using this big chunk of a word called the stimulus package right? It's like the elephant in the room. And then you go to how do you eat the elephant one bite at a time? I think you need to be taking those components of the stimulus package and start explaining them to your customers and your clients. And I think you can be engaging them with information they could really use right now, really use. And again, go in NER and they are starting to break down and make explanations of this stimulus package for you. So it's all there. You can be using it in all different ways, calling people, messaging people, um, you know, again, co virtual calling, live like streams like this, lots of different ways to start to engage the public with how this stimulus package will help them in their real estate needs. All right, so how do you do something like, where's the line between um, being engaging and being annoying. Let, let me let me give you an example. Um, a friend of mine was sharing today an email that she got from I don't want to I don't want to throw anybody under the bus. An email that she got from a, a vendor in in real estate, and it was this like you know I'm thinking about you during these times, right? And it was addressed to dear period. So they had done oh. some kind of like mail merge, right? And yeah. they didn't have it right, and so they were so concerned about dear period. So how, where do you draw the line between being like engaging or last time we were talking about useful and, and authentic to where you become kind of a tool? Well, I, I think if you're sick of you, you're annoying. <laughs> you're you know? <laughs> right. I mean, I get sick of myself. I, you know, for sure. Um, but I want to, I'm going to, I know you're the host and you get to lead, but I'm going to ignore you for a minute because I want to go back to the question you gave Jody. She got a really good question about what agents could be doing. And I really like what she said and agree completely about sharing all that stimulus package information. But I also think that we can do some old school stuff that we're not, do, we're making excuses not to do. And my example would be your pop buys. A lot of realtors use pop buys and do pop buys. You can still do that. You're not going to knock on the door and physically engage with that person. But those, those little gifts that you would be dropping off for Easter or whatever, you can still leave those on the porch. You know, you can still physically get out and do things to show that you care. Yeah, and how awesome would that be right now if you're stuck at home or trying to be like a good citizen and then the doorbell rings and you go find a little surprise package waiting there for you that's not from UPS? Yeah, it's from your favorite realtor. Right. Worth, Lee. Am, am I the only one that does the orders from Amazon just so I feel like I'm getting some contact with the outside? Like, oh, a present for me, you know? Yeah, well, we got to be careful. If anyone has jelly beans on their pop by list, pop by me. <laughs> ah, gotcha. Okay. Um, what, what would be another thing that we could do? I love that idea of doing the pop by and, and maintaining social distancing at the same time. What, give me some other tips for engagement right now. 
Hey, what about another old fashioned idea as well that um, of in avoiding that um, dear blank comma, <laughs> the, the, mail, the mail merge um, from hell sort of mistake is, how about getting out some pen and paper and writing actual physical notes? We talk about that all the time of, of, of writing a handwritten note and the power of that handwritten, handwritten note. So I think that's really important. And particularly if you have anything coming up like birthdays or, or some of those, please remember we're seeing a lot of creative ways of celebrating birthday. Add to that by writing them a note and, and making sure you wish them a happy birthday. All right. What about a virtual housewarming party? Like a lot, I mean, a lot Probably of more. us are having closings, right? Yeah. So after closing, we get a list, you know, have them give us a list of the people they want to invite, just like we would a regular housewarming party, except we throw it virtually. And we can show like, you know, the virtual tour that we have from the house that they purchased or the pictures, you know, whatever they want us to share. Yep. You know, we we could share and it would give them a chance to talk to their friends on a virtual platform. Um, and we, I mean, we just really would provide that party without having to be the center of attention, right? Okay. That, I'm, I'm trying to wrap my head around how that would work. You'll get there. You'll get there. It's a great <laughs> idea. It is a great idea. You just, you'll get there. Evan. All right. remember, remember you showed us the tour of your office the other day by showing us that your phone streams to the, this video platform. So imagine if the um, newly, um, the new purchasers, um, you, you set up the platform and then they stream their own tour of what they decided and what they want to point out to their friends of their new house using their phone walking around the house. All right, I like it, I like it. Thanks, uh, Cody. <laughs> Let, let's talk about engagement a little, a little bit more. So Brent, you've been following his dad jokes. Yes. Ugh. And I think that's a great example of, cause I, you know, I'm super careful of, um, you know, I don't want to be like, hi, I'm here trying to be engaging. You know what I mean? I'm like allergic <laughs> to that. And, and I just, I love um, like his, his jokes scroll by and I want to see them because uh, his kids are cute, and, and I like seeing him be a dad because you know he can be a grouch sometimes, but he's always he's always around around his kids. He's great, you know. Um, so I I started sending him jokes, and I'm I'm like fingers crossed he's going to send one of my jokes out, use one of my jokes. But right. that's a great way of engaging with people, right? It's just got nothing to do with anything else. Just kind of like chatting in the living room and playing with the kids, right? Yeah. Wait a second, Lee. You and I will have to pick a child each then, and and start on because because Evan's trying to stack the deck for Brent to win here. Well, I, I have a confession. Yeah. I sent a joke to Laura. Oh, ah! see, <laughs> see. So Laura can Laura can pick a kid or however she wants to handle that. And I gotta say, since we're talking about Brent and his family, and he's not here to do anything about it, um, the daughter, she looks exactly like Laura. Oh, totally. I really had not even seen how much it was until I started watching the joke videos. And it's like, she's just, oh, here. Oh, and, sure and what a great time for Brent to join us. <laughs> <laughs> Brent, we weren't, we weren't talking about you. I don't know what you mean. We were not talking about you, Brent. <laughs> Hi, what's happening? Hey, welcome to Facebook. No, nothing. We weren't talking about you. I don't know what no, you mean. No, nothing. Nothing. Nothing's <laughs> happening. Well, uh, I know the three of you, and none of it was good. So, uh, good thing this is uh, being live and recorded. So, <laughs> yeah, we were just we were talking Would about. You your like to apologize joke. now in public or privately? Uh, I have right? nothing to apologize before. I stand behind what I said. <laughs> we, were, we were we were I'm talking about your dad jokes. Yeah. yeah. Hey, those are funny. They are funny. They're great. Ah, ah, very I engaging. I can't tell you how much the, I come home in the afternoon and they're like, I got my joke. You're going to love this one. You're not. Well, I think it's very generous of them to include you. Um, yeah, it is. In that, it is. You know? <laughs> it is. And uh, if you can see the outtakes of me being a very bad dad of, uh, it would be, it would be, uh, that's a whole different story. So will there be a <laughs> blooper reel in the future? I don't know. I, I have to decide. Some of them are funny and some of them are me like, 
disciplining my kids. So I, I've got to be very careful. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we, we, we've been talking about engagement, right? And uh, I, I take it into like, as let's talk about realtors, homeowners, real estate profession, like our, our kind of world here. Why do we care about engagement? Uh, I mean, obviously, like if you have a business, if you have a brand to sell and you want to build a, you know, a following and all that, you want to drive engagement is what, you know, the marketing gurus tell us. But like, I mean, for real, like what, what's the point of engagement in our world? Why should we care? Brent. That's the question for me? Yeah. Oh, uh, what does it mean? I mean, what do you, what, I guess the, the question is, what are you trying to get out of it? I mean, it, you know, some of it, when you come about engagement, it, it has everything to do with relationships and, and, you know, I, 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 and from a digital marketing standpoint, you know, I have this question all the time. I've, I've been through several digital marketing firms um, because they do that all the time. It's, Hey, you got a great, great engagement. Well, I don't care about engagement. I care about clients and sales and, you know, um, and that sounds sort of harsh. Um, but when you're paying for that, yeah, I think uh, that, that's certainly going to be a driver. So engagement is, is in the eye of the beholder. Uh, so when, uh, you know, d determine what that is. So for me, you know, in, engagement for somebody that I know is a personal relationship, right? Is, is hey, I want to create, you know, content that people tend to like. And if it just makes you smile, that's not measurable. But yeah, that's fun. But if it comes to a sales technique, you know, and we want to drive maybe a, a lead, an anonymous lead, all the way in through the sales funnel, well, that's a whole different type of engagement. Uh, and I want that not to be engagement. I want that to be a sale that eventually comes a friendship. Okay, so we know real estate is, is relationships. I, I don't know. I think just in this time where we are right now, it has me thinking a lot more about um, – the depth of relationships and, and as opposed to the, the money side of things, you know? Yes. Um, so I'm just trying to think of how does that apply right now? We talked before you got here, we talked about some ways to engage people with content and that sort of thing. But um, I was just trying to bring it into, into the real estate world. I, I I'm a homeowner right now thinking of selling. I, I'm thinking of buying. I don't know. I'm, I'm thinking of getting toilet paper and groceries, you know? So what is there for, for you all to engage me about when I can't leave the house? I think you touch, you've touched on it before. It's to show you care. I mean, I, I, mean, I, I think there's, there's sort of a, an aspect of that. Is the problem is, is, is you know, everybody's in a different phase of this. That's what kind of makes this really unique. I mean, we've been, we've been, self, we've been uh, shelter in place for two weeks and you in Arizona got shelter in place yesterday. So y'all right. are in a whole different phase of, of all of this. So it, it, it's just, it, and everybody handles this emotionally, uh, emotionally different. So I think kind of reaching out to, to those people and saying, you know, how can I help and what do you need? I mean, there's givers and some people need help and some people want to give help and just find out where you, where you fit on that scale and either seek it, seek it or contribute to it. All right. It doesn't necessarily have to be real estate related, but I mean, I've had a lot of real estate conversations about, can I close? Should I close? Uh, you know, the safety of closings, we've got pending deals. I don't know what to do with my business. So from that standpoint, that's, you know, that's the help that some people need. Some what do you of think, Lee? Or Jody, there. what do you think? Well, I wanted to add another layer into this conversation, and that is um, engagement from realtor to realtor. And I'm not sure we've added to that story necessarily completely. And, and I think that many of us who go quite far back in our industry um, will will say that our realtor to realtor engagement may have been diminishing over the years. You know, when I started in real estate, we were just a couple of um, towns all together, meeting every Tuesday morning, you know, distributing, I'm going to date myself here, MLS books, there right? you go. going on broker tour, you know, together and et cetera, going to offices to pick up and drop off keys. There was a lot of interaction, a lot of engagement, between realtor to realtor and that actually benefited the consumer in my opinion. And 
that's been diminishing and I'm, I'm afraid this may be, if we don't make a concerted effort, I'm afraid this might exacerbate or worsen the situation. That part of us needs to be reaching out and engaging with our fellow realtors as well. Has it diminished or has it just changed? I wouldn't mind if it changed, Brent, but I think it's diminished. You know, okay. I think that um, they they don't know each other. They don't get involved. They um, are become suspicious of each other when they don't know those things, et cetera. It, it has the ability to change. We see that. We were talking about it earlier, about our, all of our technology, our uses, our social media. It has the ability. And I think maybe we should think about pushing that engagement as well. I'd love to see the people that are on the live comment and, and, and exchange that information as well, you know, between each other. All right, so we were having our office meeting this morning and you know, there are, everything's fluid. Some sales are canceling for obvious reasons, you know, and uh, there, there maybe are some conflicts sometimes with agents on the two different sides, you know, and this came up that, well, you know, she, that other agent is really, you know, upset because of everything that's going on. And it's like, well, yeah, everybody is. So wh what do you do, what, what can you do there to kind of really build the relationship with the other, the agent on the other side, um, who's like super stressed and freaked out right now? Lee. Ask them what they need. I, I mean, I think there's this whole a dichotomy between the golden rule and the platinum rule, right? So the golden rule is treat everybody how you want to be treated, where the platinum rule says treat them how they want to be treated. And okay. so the platinum rule is really a higher standard. Um, so exercise the platinum rule. When I'm working with an agent, I know that this is a challenge. There is nothing wrong with saying, hey, we're all stressed right now. I know you got a lot on your plate. Is there something I can do to help? What can I do to make this easier for you? What do you need from me? I don't think there's anything wrong with answering the question. Worst case scenario is they want you to do something that you can't and you have to help them find an alternative. Yeah. Most likely you can help. Do you think people are, are more or less willing right now to kind of show some of that um, uh, imperfection? I think society is more willing to show their imperfections on an everyday basis and this hasn't changed that. <laughs> well, and I'm not trying to be funny. It's just, no. I mean, it's no longer, you know, it, it used to be if you were struggling with something, you had too much on your plate, that was nobody else's business and you kept it out of your business. You didn't share that. I can't tell you how many times a year I'm on the phone with an agent and she's like, I just don't have time for this. I got to go get the kids. I got to do this you know, or him, I mean, it's, they're happy to tell us all the problems that they have and why they can't do what they need to do in business. So what's wrong with asking how we can help? Well, I like the way you said about, you know, we're all, we're all, I forget how you put it, but basically, you know, uh, we're all stressed right now. Yeah. And I, I think that's a really good way to, you know, acknowledge that as a, as a way of connecting, or I'm sorry, we're, we're saying engaging, you know, but I think that's that real, that authenticity that's you know this is really who i am and what i'm feeling right now is there's a moment in time where that feels like a, a really valuable um approach and now's a moment in time where uh, where your people are a lot willing to accept those type of emotions right yeah it, it, you you know in in a month ago and you're saying I, i'm a little stressed i got a lot going on that could be received in one way, but, but now where you're like, all right, there's, there's a lot happening right now. So I just need a minute. Um, I, I think people are much more willing to sort of forgive, I guess. I like that. And you know what? They also may have some really helpful ideas for you as well. Um, one of the things I have been noticing on Instagram is a lot of people who uh, have been have been homeschooling for quite a while, sharing their homeschooling sources and tips and, and tricks and, you know, using a schedule and helping people kind of figure this new way of, of do, doing something that they'd never done before. So 
maybe for those of us who remember what it was like to go on Broker Caravan and, and meet with people, can figure out how to do that virtually and, and really help someone with some information they had not thought of before. Yeah. So Brent, what you you got out in the real world and or not in the real the virtual real world yesterday and got to do your thing and and teach. Tell us about how how did that go? It it was fantastic. Um, I wouldn't say the class was fantastic, but it was just you know you just you, you got a I got a, I got a piece of normalcy. So I'm I'm kind of used to teaching from a virtual world. Um, and while I appreciate all of this Zoomness, um, this is not everyday life for me so to be able to get in the studio and to teach a class and to just kind of say okay we're not going to talk about this virus we're going to talk about you know fair housing or whatever we're going to talk about it felt really really good so um just you, you got to you know you got to get in your element for a minute so that was nice oh that's i love that you got to do that what yeah. was how were your students same as always different what what's happening there I'd say they probably were a little bit more engaged. I mean, I think, you know, everybody's kind of looking for their own little slice of, 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 of seemingly normal or seemingly back. So I think, you know, we had some students that had never done it before. We had a lot of students that, that, that had done it before. So um, I think everybody was kind of happy for, for where we were. Uh, we typically don't have technical glitches. We had a small little technical glitch for uh, uh, about, you know, 30 seconds. Everybody was like, yeah, it happens. I mean, I'm, I'm convinced that our internet provider is reducing our bandwidth, which is causing some problems for me personally. I'm a little upset with them. Um, <laughs> so, but that, that notwithstanding, I think everybody's kind of, uh, you know, everybody was much more okay with it. And I'm like, yeah, well, no big deal. Move on. So, so uh, what about you, Lee? I know you do that kind of teaching as well. Have you done anything in the last few days? Um, not, I haven't done any teaching in the last few days, though I have about zoomed out on the meetings. Um, but what he was saying, um, by the way, Brent, I think we're all envious that you got to do that. Just yeah. throw that out there. But um, You just do it. That's what I decided to do, and I just did it. I, I didn't know who would show up or who wouldn't, so it was nice. There you but. go. It, it wraps back around to where, to where we started, though. And that is we're talking about engagement and being engaged on a virtual platform. I think all these virtual meeting, like committee meetings, um, the cocktail parties, all this stuff that people are doing is going to show up in our classrooms and make those virtual classrooms better. I think they're getting in their social situations, they're getting more comfortable with the virtual process. Oh yeah. So now when they go to class, a class that's virtual, I think they're going to be more likely to participate and get engaged because they've been doing it, you know, with their little cocktail parties and stuff. Yeah, yeah they're going to be starving for like real life, you know. <laughs> I was going to say, Brent, no offense, but I think they might have been so into you because they were just sick of Netflix. So they were yes. excited to be. Whatever it takes, man. Right? Whatever it takes. I'm good. I'm Go to good. YouTube and binge watch Brent. Yeah. So. So uh, speaking of stupid jokes, they didn't say they needed an emotional support tiger. And I was right. Like, oh, here we go. Here we go. Yeah. So I just I, another dumb joke. Yesterday I almost posted. You could say today zoomed right by, but then I thought that's not. I can't. Uh, yeah, baby. Uh, yeah. Good dad joke. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Do you, uh, I guess a question. I don't know if y'all covered it, but do you think all of these zooms are bringing people closer together or further apart? I mean, the technology suggests that we can do things further apart, but do you think it's bringing like, you you have an office, right? An office that would ordinarily you just kind of go in and go out well now everybody has to zoom is that making people more conscious to be close or is it going well this is nice i don't really have to talk to you what do you think i've been thinking a lot about this. oh i i think closer i had uh 75 people on or something yesterday and um they were like i, I was fun it was yeah. you know it was it was it was a good time it was a lot of people that you know it was good to see friends and um we were joking around and it was light and it was way more um, social than typically a remote would be in my experience. What, what do you all think? I agree with you. I think, um, I think it has a lasting effect. I think people are realizing that there is better 
technology and more engaging technology than what they have been stuck in in the past, which has been phone, text, and email. And um, I think it's an improvement for the better. All right, well, let me, let me ask you this so that we can head toward wrapping up. The, these lessons that we've talked about uh, and maybe that we're learning in this moment of time where we are more engaging, what, give me something like we can do um, to carry those lessons forward in some other capacity or in any way, really, um, to be engaging in our everyday business and life going forward. Well, maybe, you know, where we used to send out like a quarterly newsletter or something, you know, to our real estate clients, maybe now we host a quarterly state of the real estate, you know, where we, they can, you know, past clients can jump on if they want, they get the invite, it's an opportunity to touch them, we can tell them what's going on in real estate. And it's, it is more engaging, it's more face-to-face -face than just sending them that e-newsletter, right? Is that All right, and Jody, what do you think? Something like that? Yeah, absolutely. What do you think, Jody? You know, um, I, I think that the opportunities there kind of is the reverse of the question you asked, when are you annoying? I, I think you're, you're, um, you're useful, you're engaging, as long as you're providing what everyone needs. So if you, are constantly focusing on what do what do consumers out there need in the real estate industry, and you're providing it in our in our new tools and techniques that we have. For example, what Lee just said, I think you're going to be engaging to the consumer no matter how you are providing it. So you you put them first and try to kind of get it, put yourself in their position and and yeah. see. Yeah. 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 You know, I, I said to my class this morning. Um, stop asking for referrals and start earning referrals, right? And you earn them by giving people what they need. Okay, I'm gonna. I'm just gonna push we're, I'm gonna, on all of you on that because I think that's a, a good place to look. Uh, what do people need from us right now? I, I'm asking like specifically what what should we be? And I'm using my my quotes here a lot today to be engaging right now the people that we engage with, what are they needing from us? Is it, is it a laugh? Is it a, a, a meme? Is it something about real estate? What is it? I'm going to stick on the real estate side of my question. And I'm going to say factual information, not in a panic mindset. Okay. The, so, so, so if I'm a realtor, I can be reaching out to my, the people, uh, to my people and, uh, tr separating fact from fiction or fear, sharing factual information about the market, or maybe, you know, if you want to get into health related issues and so forth, uh, that's one way to show up and engage them. I think so. Love it. Brent, and I'm coming to you after, uh, Lee, I'm coming to you after Brent. Uh, I mean, I, I think to some degree, yes, content's king, so be relevant. Um, but I, I don't know that I, I don't know if, if you were to say, give them what they need from a health related standpoint, I'm not, I'm not going to spew all of that information. I think there's much better sources for that. Fair. Um, you know, I, I think it, it depends on, depends on what you're trying to do and, and, and it depends on your frame of mind. I mean, I, I think if, if you're real estate mind related, I think, and you're giving them real estate related information, here's the, you know, I've contacted all the title companies in my area and here's their policies for remote closings. Here are the mortgage companies that are working remotely. Um, this is what the, 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 the property areas look like, you know, just trying to give people a little bit of information because everybody's giving you health related stuff. And to be perfectly honest, the only thing I would do is share, you know, some other source. Uh, whereas if, if I'm a real estate professional, you know, and you're looking either, you know, you may not be looking to buy or sell, but you may be looking for what's going on in the marketplace. You know, here's a list of the, the, you know, where we are right now is there's a, a list of restaurants that are providing meals to furloughed workers, right? So they got a, a like a, they call it a furlough caravan. And, you know, there's a restaurant that's, you know, grilling a thousand burgers today. And tomorrow there's a barbecue joint that's grilling ham that's grilling the chicken. So, you know, providing that kind of information just about your community. I mean, if you're going to be the realtor in your community, then prove it. 
Right. Okay, that's great. Let me pluck a few of those things out just to kind of restate them. Opportunity for reaching out to your community, uh, yeah. uh, meals, delivery, and how you can help and how you can take advantage. I'm hearing stuff for like educators and on the association side, mm. sharing resources with our, our, our peers and our members on uh, what how title is doing business differently or escrow, how lenders are doing business differently and how it affects them. I think that's and that part also applies to clients. So I think that's yeah. those are some really good ones. Well, I'll give you a perfect example. On my class yesterday, we were kind of I was talking to a lender and a title company, and both of them were, you know, just randomly said, and I I didn't even think about this, but they were like, Yeah, 30 day close isn't gonna happen. So anytime you're looking for real estate, get 45 days plus. It's just not happening. And I was like, Wow, mm. what a great piece of information just to get out there and say, Hey, I know, you know, we were used to a 30 day close, but that's not happening anymore. Well, that's kind of a good, a good piece of information that the real estate community needs to know about. Yep. Yeah, so. and, and probably drilling down further to, to why, right? And yes. how we can control those, those deadlines, what we can do to get ahead of them. Super, Lee, what you got? Yeah, I think, um, you know, everything they said is right on. And I would just add, um, at the risk of repeating myself, I think whoever your clients are, you know, whether it's for us like association staff, or if it is, you know, our, our real estate customers, student, whatever, whatever it is, you know, it, just asking them, how are you? What do you need? What can, you know, can I do that for you? And, and being sincere about it and them feeling like, you are sincere, not just trying to get hired to do something. You know, I, I, I think we just, we have to ask them because I, I don't even know what I need. So it's impossible for me to know what they need unless I ask them, right? But, but what Brent and Jody said is absolutely true too. All the community information, everything factual, absolutely. But I, I'm thinking like my car dealer, I don't really care what's going on in the market right now for new and used cars. You know, I mean, there is, there is nothing he can do for me. It would be nice to know he's there, but you know, that, that's, that's kind of it. So I think, I, I think you're annoying. Your question about being annoying is a legitimate question. Yeah, okay, I, I'm not sure if I ever told you this, but years ago at an NAR conference when social media was like exploding and they had a, um, a blogger lounge there. Remember they used to do that at the yeah. conferences? And um, Todd Carpenter was doing like a, um, like a little pop-up class in the blogger lounge and it was called uh, Twitter Tools and How Not to Be One. And I was, <laughs> I was thinking about that, it, you know, when you're crossing over into just being, being annoying. Yeah. So shout out to, to Todd for that. All right. So look, I want to, let, we're going to wrap it up. I'm glad it was really good to see all of you. I'm glad Brent that you got your soul filled a little bit by getting out there yeah. and seeing and, and doing your thing. Um, no, be down for a tardy. Oh no. It's, yeah, I got it. It's on your permanent record. Don't worry, <laughs> but it's okay. It's not perfect <laughs> attendance. I just have a tardy. All right. Well, you all go out and do something nice for somebody. Go yes. engage people in a positive way. Fill your soul. Uh, go smile. Get outside. See the sun. Stay productive. Good to see you all. We love you, and we will see you next time. Awesome. Bye, guys.